Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market prep video for May 20th, 2021. So yesterday we had a pretty ugly sell-off, but then we had some rays of sunshine kind of come through as we bounced off of some key te technical areas. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink, settle into our office chairs, and let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. Yesterday was pretty, um, well, it was probably a troubling day for a lot of folks as the market kind of um, got ugly there for a bit. And we start, we're starting to see some technical problems in the charts. So how about we take a look at these charts, see if we can get some information from that and see how we might want to approach the market for today. So first off, one of the things we have to note is that although we bounced, and let me show you this, we bounced right off of our 50 day moving average. We traveled through it just a little bit. I want you to notice that we actually created a lower low before we bounced. So now we have this possible downtrend in the chart. Now this could also be looked at as a double bottom. So we have this little wedging pattern uh, forming in the chart with the lower high double bottom possibility. We also have to notice that we broke down below this support level yesterday and we still have this resistance in the chart that we need to challenge if we're going to recover from this area. Now, this morning we have a little bit of bearishness um, in the market. Um, Pre-market is showing a little bit of a pullback from yesterday's close. Although, as you can see, it is significantly better than what it was um, earlier this morning. So we're living underneath this downtrend. What does that mean? Well, if we can rally, if we can find that energy to lift up, we're going to want to watch this level right up in here as we push up into this area and that downtrend. Will we have the energy to break through that area? And once we break through, we're going to need proof that we can hold it as support before we can really start to resume an upside trend. If we were to fail here, if we push on up and that resistance is just too strong and those bears come back in, we do have that possibility that we could fail somewhere along this downtrend line and make that new low official in the chart. So we're going to have to watch that closely and that would be a psychological break of that 50 day moving average and could really create some problems in the overall market. Now the other thing that we do have to recognize and I don't think there's too many ways that you could draw this um, any differently, um, but we have um, the Dow just kind of clinging, I mean right at the edge of a pretty big precipice. Um, if we were to drift off into that area, it could get kind of ugly. So we need those bulls to really step up here and hold um, that area. Because if we draw any trend tighter, then we have failed um, the trend in the Dow. So keep a close eye on that. Let's take a look at the SPY. Now SPY also has that glimmer of sunshine here where we held that 50 day moving average. And as a matter of fact, we held a modestly higher low here in the chart. So as you can see here with that little bit of a higher low, um, that double bottom idea or that little tiny higher low provides a little bit of hope of rally back up. However, we still have some issues that obviously um, are going to be challenging, um, at least I believe are going to be challenging for the market. First, we have this lower high and um, possible downtrend in play in the chart. And then we just have some significant levels of price resistance in this SPY chart. If we can break through this one, 
then we still have this downtrend area and we still have these significant levels of price resistance in the chart that we're going to have to break through to the upside. Once again, we cannot resume an uptrend until we break that downtrend and hold it as support. If we can get that move and hold some support level in here, then we may be in pretty good shape in the SPY as well. Now, if I draw that same trend line that I drew on the Dow, draw this up through here, notice that uh, it's a pretty challenging, I mean, you could get pretty creative in here and say the SPY has held trend but the way i look at this i have to admit that the spy kind of broke its upside trend and so while the diamonds are kind of clinging clinging to that trend the spy has that tech technical damage where we've kind of given up some pretty substantial support levels and um, um, even that possible trend. So if I draw these three things out I want you to notice there is a pretty key level right in here um, that if we rally into that it's going to be the test can we push through that level or will that be where the bears come back into play. Kind of an interesting chart uh, we're right there at that decision point for the market um, in the in the spy then if we take a look at the cues that decision has already been made obviously and we've continued to make lower lows in the nasdaq nasdaq pushing down now yesterday we had a nice surge up with the big tech giants um really bouncing um and helping that nasdaq uh push back up remember seven companies make up about 40 percent of seven tech companies make up about 40 percent of the spy and um, they are um, also just a massive weighting in the nasdaq index so kind of keep that in mind that we can just get a few companies to bounce and we can get a significant move and it really doesn't change much of anything in the overall um, of the index now, as we continue to challenge this uh, downtrend and trying to rally up, you can see we're trying to get a little bit of a push here this morning in the NASDAQ. Let's keep in mind that we still have significant levels of price resistance above that we're going to have to deal with um, if we're going to recover. And keep in mind, if we can push off of this kind of double bottom low, if we can break through, if we can hold a higher low, then maybe we can begin that uptrend back to the upside. But we also have to keep in mind that we are underneath our 50 day moving average and our shorter term averages are starting to make that cross down. So we're creating technical problems in the chart as well where all these moving averages are going to create a resistance level right here in this area. So if we can push on through to the upside, We've got a pretty substantial challenge here in price action and technical um, challenge um, to push on through. I'm not saying it can't be done, just saying that we need to be watching that pretty carefully. And um, the fact that we have um, so much technical damage here in this chart, um, it would not be all that much um, effort by the bears if they decide to engage here. Um, to push us lower so watch that carefully we probably should be expecting some pretty big price moves um, with and we'll look at the VIX here in a second but some pretty big price moves that can be rather challenging we could see intraday whipsaws pop and drops we can see overnight reversals so we're gonna have to be pretty careful how we trade because the price action could be quite challenging then if we take a look, a look at IWM, now IWM continues to struggle in that same problem underneath its 50 day moving average. It did hold a higher low and with energies kind of holding up, financials holding up, that is helping the IWM hang on to a pretty substantial level of price support in here. And you could uh, go off the bottoms here, you could maybe go right in here um, with your um, technical drawings, but keep in mind that we still are under the 50 day moving average and notice that all of our shorter term averages have crossed through. So we are creating a relatively strong resistance level 
price resistance and technical resistance level right in this area. So any rally back that pushes back up to challenge in this area could run into, um, well, some trouble. We're going to need some energy to push through there um, if we're going to make that upside move. So we've got some technical damage, some work to be done. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX left us with kind of, hmm, um, a little bit of uncertainty. Notice that we are back above this area of price support in the chart. We have held this downtrend as support. And although we had a pretty substantial pullback in that move in the VIX yesterday, we can see that we're still quite elevated in the VIX above a 22 handle, which means we should be prepared for some pretty volatile price action um, in the days ahead as long as we continue to hold up here. Now, if we can get those bulls to really engage and push us back down, we still have a significant move to the downside um, that could hold that trend or hold this price support. So kind of keep some, some eyes on that. And also remember, we have this little bit of an uptrend going on in this chart. So if we push back into here, we've kind of got a multiple level of price action support error where we could find some support in that VIX and see those bears re-engage in here. So we've got some work to do. Um, if we're going to um, get some things going and recover. Now on the bright side, if we take a look at TNX, um, the uh, 10 year treasuries, um, they bounced up pretty strongly yesterday, but this morning they're pulling back just ever so slightly. So although we have a bullish setup here in this chart, you can see that is a very, very bullish setup uh, for the 10-year treasuries, su suggesting that more pressure on those tre treasuries could be coming. At least this morning, we're getting just a modest pullback um, after that Fed statement that they may start um, unwinding some of the debt spending that they've been doing um, to try and prevent overheating of the market. So that may ease that just a little bit, but we'll want to watch that pretty closely. Let's take a look at um, our T21 22, the four week new high, new low ratio. Now, T21 22 doesn't give us directional. Um, a look, it doesn't tell us which way the market is going to go, but what it does tell us is when we've reached overbought or oversold conditions. Yesterday at one point when we were down 500 points in the Dow, we were down here in that oversold um, area. And bouncing back up by the end of the day, you can see that we've now opened up that possibility that there's still more downside possible um, in the market. So don't be too surprised if um, in the pre-market we're trying to push up off the morning lows or off the overnight lows that if we, we pop up a little bit this morning and see those sellers come in pushing us back down to retest those lows of um, last night, we'll want to watch that closely and um, keep a close eye on that possibility that we have we still have an open door to the downside but we also have a pretty sizable upside um, open door here as well so if we if we can find some inspiration maybe in the um, um, economic data or earnings data that could inspire those bulls, we do have plenty of upside potential if we could get that relief rally going. So a little bit of both sides here and we'll want to watch that carefully. If we take a look at T2101, I think there is some good news here as well and uh, of course some concerning news. But first off, we saw yesterday market breadth increase a little bit on that selling wave, but it wasn't a substantial increase. And I think that is a good sign that we didn't see a, um, a massive panic wave come into the market. But overall, we still see this really um, concerning decline in market breadth. Um, as we continue to try and hold on to these high price levels, this really continues to concern me that we just can't get energy 
um, in, in the market. So watch that carefully and closely. There's still some reason for concern here on market breadth. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. In our economic calendar, we've got a couple of things that we want to pay attention to here. First off, we're going to get jobless claims this morning here before the bell. And then we're also going to get the Philly Fed data. Now, both of these will probably be relatively bullish numbers. Um, so watch that closely. They could help us um, move up a little bit. We've got some more Fed speak going on today. We've got a bunch of bond um, announcements and auctions going off here, mostly short term. We do have some 10 year tips um, that might be worth keeping an eye on. And then um, let me push this up here. As you can see, um, we've got some Fed speak and we've got the Fed balance sheet and natural gas report. Both of these, nobody seems to care too much about um, right now. So um, no worries, the, the news will be here this morning. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar only has about 38 companies that were on the list this morning. And um, uh, quite a few of those companies have already reported. So let's take a look at some of those notables this morning in that earnings. We have AMAT that will be reporting today. This will, this will, I believe, reports after the bell today, but you'll want to keep an eye on that. AMAT has been in a downtrend and, as you can see, um, been relatively challenged and we have some resistance above. So we're going to need a pretty decent report out of that to try and reverse um, that downtrend in AMAT. We have BJ. BJ reporting today, keep an eye on that. Looks like they have disappointed this morning a little bit and we're seeing a backing away from this big resistance area in the chart. There is some price support in here, of course, that could hold it and we do have that upside trend, but let's keep a close eye on that pretty ugly pullback here this morning. Uh, CSIQ I put on the list, um, that is holding on to some support in here you can see we're trying to bounce but um, obviously not a not exactly a wonderful chart for trend um, and CSIQ let's take a look at Decker's Decker's reporting um, we'll want to keep an eye on this I'm not seeing any price action movement in this yet this morning notice that we do have this little bit of downturn we've been in this wide choppy range that'll be an interesting report to keep an eye on we've got Hormel Hormel reporting today looks like Hormel is bouncing up this morning it has been in an ugly ugly downtrend trying to grab onto a rel relatively significant level of price support so if this can get some energy in here push up through that downtrend hold it as support then hey might even be a buy that I'd be some looking at um, in the chart and then let's take a look at Ralph Lauren Ralph Lauren reporting today. It may be after the bell that this reports, but watch this carefully in here. We've been running in this upside trend, kind of challenged by some price resistance above. Let's see if that report can move us along. Pan W is on the list today. Keep an eye on this one. Um, we've been running in uh, this downtrend in the chart. So an earnings report will either um, uh, help support that downtrend or maybe try to reverse it to the upside. Watch that one. And last I have on the le list today is Ross Stores. Ross Stores will want to keep an eye on that. Uh, trying to hold on to some price support. It's been um, pretty remarkable how strong some of these retailers have been here recently. Um, so keep a close eye on that. Some of those have, have, done, uh, have performed quite well after their earnings reports. So watch them closely. How about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today, but before we do that, guys, if you can do me a quick favor, this is the first time you've seen these videos, please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find this content to be helpful without all the hype and drama that you see every place else in helping you, um, um, 
determine how you may want to approach the market for today. If you could please click that thumbs up button and also leave a brief comment. Those two things are very, very important to help the algorithms continue to show these videos to more folks. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. And thank you very much for those that have been utilizing that link right underneath the title of the video, um, the buy me a coffee link. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys, uh, you humble me every, every day. I never would have expected that we'd be over 20,000 subscribers with this kind of content. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up and please keep in mind that I want to remind everyone that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. And um, you should do your own due diligence and make sure you understand the risk of every single trade that you consider. Make sure it fits your tolerance for risk on trades. So a couple stocks I want to point out here that are in the inverse um, um, arena here. Take a look at PSQ. Now this is an a direct inverse of the NASDAQ. It's not leveraged. It's a direct inverse of um, the QQQ. And I want you to notice that this is actually starting to reach that point where this could become relatively bullish. And we might want to take or be watching charts like this. Notice that we pushed up above our 50 day moving average and our 50 day moving average may start to flatten out here and we may actually hold in this area. Keep an eye on PSQ. It could be a pretty good hedge to the market or it may be something that you could profit nicely from um in um in a market sell-off so watch that carefully psq i'm going to give you a couple others um rwm rwm would be for the russell this is an unleveraged inverse etf that you might want to keep an eye on um, um, that is also in what we call a rounded bottom breakout pattern that shows bullishness, uh, potential bullishness to the upside. Potent if the market starts to sell, if IWM starts to pull back, this could be very, very profitable. Keep an eye on that. Um, of course, there's leverage products for these as well. I'm showing you the unleveraged. You could choose to go the other direction, but remember, every time we add some additional leverage to those, it makes the volatility even that more intense. And the reason I'm showing you these that are unleveraged is because they're not so intense. Let's take a look at um, SH. SH would be for the S&P 500. And real quickly, DOG. DOG would be for the Dow. And all of those are testing those downtrend lines, and that possibility they could start breaking to the upside. So not maybe ready for prime time yet, but definitely something to pay attention to. I think we should also be keeping a really close eye um, on gold. Gold broke through some resistance here in that upside move and although it pulled back yesterday um, as long as we can hold up in this area and hold on to this trend I think we should be keeping a close eye on gold. I also have to say silver. Um, silver perking up um, with the um, meteoric collapse of um, cryptos here the last um, few days, um, gold and silver may start gaining a little bit more favor here in the market. So keep a close eye on this. Um, um, looking pretty good overall in these charts. And if inflation is going to be a problem, these may be some of those safe havens that we can find some protection. Uh, take a look at MDLZ. MDLZ um, could be setting up here for a trade. Notice that we tried to push up a little bit yesterday. This is one of those defensive sector stocks, good dividend paying stock that um, is potentially setting up. There's blue sky above on this chart and it's looking like it may hold in this trend. So keep a close eye on that. Looking pretty good overall. Take a look at some of these uh, bulk shippers or, or shipping areas. Notice that this is held up quite well and looking pretty good here. Um, SBLK might be something you want to pay attention to. Just got past its earnings report, so I think it's worth keeping an eye on that. I think we should also keep an eye, um, although we had um, a little bit of a pullback um, here in energy, um, if we're going to recover 
in this country, we're going to need fuel to do that. There's just no doubt about it. We're going to need fuel. And the East Coast folks are feeling that pinch um, for sure with that pipeline um, trouble that they had, how important fuel is to our daily lives. And if our cover country is going to recover, we're going to have more and more demand on energy. Keep an eye on these. Although we pulled back, it may provide an opportunity um, in some of those stocks. Watch that closely. Might also want to keep an eye on another defensive sector stock, Philip Morris. Philip Morris has been holding up in a nice upside trend, had a little recent pullback with the volatility of the market, but watch that closely. There may be some opportunities there. So there's a few um, charts for you to look at today i'm running long on this video so i want to cut this off and say have a great day everyone i want to wish you great success in your trading and we'll see you right back here on friday morning bright and early have a great day